When I reviewed this ET75 process meter a few weeks ago, I forgot to show you guys the current consumption of the meter. Because it uses a DC to DC converter to provide the 20 volts or so voltage for the process meter measurements, it would be good to know the approximate current draw of this meter so we can get a sense of how long the batteries would last. Now the product manual does give some indication. As you can see in the battery life section here, it mentioned that for typical measurement, it would last about 100 hours. And that is for your voltage, resistance, and current measurements. Now for sourcing current, the number drops to about 2.5 hours. And that actually makes sense if you think about it. The meter is powered by two AA batteries in series operating at three volts. So to generate the 20 volts and output 20 milliamps at that voltage, you would need to draw at least 200 milliamps for the three volts battery, given some conversion loss in the DC to DC converter. The actual number would likely be much worse than that. So let's take a look. For the setup, I'm powering the ET75 from a bench power supply back there that is outputting roughly 3.2 volts at the moment, mimicking the voltage of a pair of fresh AA batteries. The current is measured by this HT118E, which is in amp mode to reduce the burden voltage. Of course, I had to remove the batteries from the ET75. You can see that the batteries are in this nice battery carrier. Let's power it on. And you can see that once we power it on, it's drawing about 50 milliamps. So extrapolate this number, we roughly get about 50 hours of continuous use as your typical alkaline batteries are rated for about 2.5 amp hours capacity. So let's cycle through the ranges. I'm not expecting this number to change much. If we, for example, measure DC or measure ohm range, actually the ohm range is a little bit lower, which is interesting, but it's not by much. So let's uh, do the continuity. And this one, the current is a little bit higher. Now I suspect that's because the voltage output is a little bit higher. So let's actually go into the diode mode because I remember the diode mode was generating about four volts open voltage here. So that definitely involved a DC to DC converter. So let's see. Yeah, you can see that we are drawing 71 milliamps. So that's quite a bit higher than the 50 milliamps nominal current here. Again, the ohm range is a little bit lower. The continuity mode is a little bit higher, but uh, on average, we're drawing about 50 milliamps. Of course, what we're really interested to know is when we're sourcing current, how much current does it draw from the battery here? So let's change it to current source mode. And without outputting current, you can see again, the quiescent current is about 50 milliamps. So let's, uh, let's say output a 20 milliamp current. And here I have a one kilo ohm resistor. So let's uh, take a look here. Yep, as we suspected, it is drawing a lot more than 200 milliamps. It's currently drawing about 300 milliamps. Yeah, let's short the output. So that will probably draw the maximum current here. And indeed, we're drawing about 327, 28 milliamps. So that's actually quite significant. And you will need to have a pair of fresh batteries. Otherwise, you would not be able to output this much current without significant voltage drop at the battery terminals. And let's uh, switch to the other ranges here. And I'm not expecting the current to change that much. As you can see, we're at 50 milliamps. And here we're at 57 milliamps. So this should give you a rough idea of the current draw of this meter. So definitely compared to your typical DMMs, the current draw of this process meter is much higher. But given what this meter does, this should not be surprising at all. Anyway, I'll catch up with you next time.